Okay, we're going to be very careful there, like... Uh, this better work this time. Uh, ah! Ah! Oh, the case didn't come with any extra screws of that type. Today we're gonna have a look at the top 5 things that I hate about building PCs and I may actually give you some practical solutions to a couple of them in this video that aren't entirely sarcastic. Like the first one, uh, with the whole screw dropping thing, uh, you know, when you put uh, just that, right? The easiest way to solve that, and this is something that somebody told me in the comment section of a video a while ago, uh, but basically you just need to re-magnetize your screwdriver, and it's really easy to do. You take a magnet, even a magnetic parts tray will work, and then you slowly rub it along the shaft of the screwdriver a couple of times, and then it should be magnetized. So let's try there. Look at that. Look at that! Look at how well that works! It's like magic! And if you want to demagnetize the screwdriver, you can just take the magnet and rub it in the opposite direction. Don't know why this works, but physics, I guess. And now we should have a useless screwdriver again! That is, that is amazing! I love that! So with that, before we get into the next four irritating things, it's time for today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Today's video is sponsored by the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped, featuring Manscaped. The centerpiece of the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped is the Lawnmower 4.0, which is waterproof and comes with a ceramic skin safe blade, which means you'll really struggle to cut your gentleman's vegetables. It also has an LED, which means that you can trim wherever you want, even if a freak explosion at your local power plant knocks out the power Grid. The Performance Package 4.0 also comes with Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver to keep you fresh all day. For a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts, the awesome Shed Travel Bag and Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs by Manscaped. If that sounds good to you, head over to manscaped.com forward slash David for 20% off, free international shipping and the two free gifts. Oh, hell yeah, I've just finished installing my gratuitously massive CPU air cooler, and quite frankly, I can't foresee that this is going to cause any difficulties for the rest of the build. Yes, now that I've mounted my motherboard, the next step is to plug in the CPU apron. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, oh, so close. Oh, it's there. No, come on. You just kind of can't use my thumb. Is that? Oh, it's in. Yes. There is something uniquely frustrating about having your shiny new gratuitously massive air cooler mounted and then to just struggle for 40 minutes to plug the CPU power in. Uh, now there are a couple of solutions to this. The first one is grow daintier hands, I guess. Or you can employ a small child to do it for you. The problem with employing a small child though is that there are a bunch of sharp metal edges which they're inevitably going to cut their hands on and then you're going to have a whole lawsuit on your hands and stuff. It's, it's, it's not pretty. So I would not recommend going down that route. The other way you can go about it is just buy a case with good clearance in that department. Something like the Fractal Design Mesh of IC is just really good at this. Even if you have a big air cooler, you can easily plug in the CPU 8-pin. But if you have a restricted case, I think the easiest way to go about dealing with this problem is you pre-route the CPU 8-pin and then you take your motherboard and you place it down at a bit of an angle, being careful not to scratch the bottom of the motherboard on the motherboard standoffs. And then you plug the CPU 8 pin in and then properly seat the motherboard screwing it down and whatever. This works really well. It seems like obvious advice, but I have gone years without doing this. And once I started doing it, I can, I can never go back. Uh, uh, now you could also mount the CPU cooler after you've mounted the motherboard in the case, but that has its own problems attached to it, which I'll mention in the next annoyance. Now, the first step to mounting the fans is installing the little clip that holds them in place, so I think this way looks right. There it is, okay. Put that through there, and then 
this. Oh wait, no, that's not that's not right. I think they're the wrong way around. That's the right way around, and then this one. How is that also the wrong way around? Does it did I put it on the wrong side? Let's try that. Maybe maybe that works. Like is it um wait, no, but that that looks weird. This is this is like a USB port. There just isn't a correct Okay, wait, let's Okay, I'm actually legitimately confused now. Wait, wait, wait. <sighs> okay, finally, after all that struggle, I've got both of the fans on. F I installed them the wrong way around. I despise metal fan mounting clips for CPU coolers. It is, it is one of the most frustrating things to deal with. Some cooler manufacturers are better than others. I find that that Arctic freezer is specifically bad. Uh, the Cooler Master Hyper 212's clips are also really irritating, but I've kind of perfected the, uh, the technique for mounting it. Uh, Noctua's is okay, it's pretty good. And that gratuitously large deep cool cooler that I used earlier in the video also has pretty usable clips. Uh, now, my my, my main suggestion would be do not try and mount an air cooler after you've mounted your motherboard in the case because that exacerbates the problem significantly as Anna found out in the NZXT video we did recently. I mean... Oh. The only other suggestion I'd have is be like a hundred percent zen when you start the process so that you have a lot of headroom for getting infuriated before you just fling the cooler out a window. That's the best I got for this one, unfortunately. Ah, my nemesis front panel connectors. We meet again. Which way, which way around is it? Come on. Oh, no, that's not right. We're gonna just do that. No, that's also not that though. Okay, there we go. It's one down. Uh, do you do it one at a time? And it, okay. Oh, yes. No, it's the... Ah, uh, it's the wrong one. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, you know what? Whatever. Do you really even need a reset switch anyway? Oh, wait to game on my new PC. Oh no, no, no. Oh, I must have plugged it in wrong. Damn you front IO connectors. Number four is the PC building equivalent of sticking bamboo under your fingernails. I genuinely despise front panel connectors. Uh, and the best solution to this problem, and this may sound very shilly, but just buy an NZXT case. They have like one square connector that's a little bit like a USB 2 front panel connector. I don't know why every other case manufacturer doesn't do this. Uh, maybe NZXT has a patent on it or something, but yeah, it, it makes it so much easier. Although if you don't want to buy an NZXT case, the other solutions are don't have your graphics card plugged in while you're struggling to do it, I guess. Uh, what also helps is start with the bottom pins first. So start with the power LEDs and then the power switch, the HDD LEDs and then the reset switch. That makes it a bit easier. Other than that, you're just gonna have to suffer. There's no real other way around that. <sighs> Before I mount my CPU cooler, I just need to get some thermal paste on the CPU. Uh, like that should be okay. Oh crap, how did I get that on there? Okay, let me just wipe that down and then we'll... Wait, how did I get it? Wait, how did it, how did it get on there? Oh, come on, I gotta get this clean. Anna's always complaining about how I get thermal paste everywhere. Oh, it's okay, I mean, I guess. Ah, what's happening? No! Pet peeve number five is thermal paste's uncanny ability to end up all in your hair and covering your cat, despite the fact that you were convinced you didn't touch it at all during the installation process. And for this one, I have one very, very effective solution. Ah, Valida Fresh. Now, with patent pending thermal paste bukake away technology that prevents the asexual reproduction of thermal paste and stops it from getting all up in your hair or whatever. Now, that's what I call Valida Fresh. 